Hey there, I'm Benjamin from Love's Data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with Google Data Studio. This is my Google Data Studio tutorial for beginners. We're going to cover the steps you need to follow to create your very first report. We'll look at how to connect a data source to use in your report. We'll explore the different ways you can visualize your data for your reports and dashboards. And we'll also look at how you can begin to customize and style your reports. Let's get started. Okay, so Google Data Studio lets you present data using a range of visualization options. You can use it to create dashboards, multi-page reports, and more. You can also connect different data sources to build your dashboards and reports. Today, we're going to connect Google Analytics, but as we'll see, there are different options you can use depending on the data you want to use. You can find Google Data Studio by heading to Data Studio, Dot .google.com dot and we can see here that we're presented with some templates at the top along with recent reports and dashboards we've created. Let's click create. We can see there are options to create a report, a data source, and an explorer. Let's select the option to create a report. The first thing we need to do is add a data source to our report. To do this, we need to use a connector. This is simply the way we get data into our report. We can see that all of the Google connectors are listed first. This includes the connectors for Google Analytics, Google Ads, Google Sheets, and more. Scrolling down, you can find connectors from other partners. This includes a range of connectors from Supermetrics and other third parties. You can use these if there isn't a Google connector available. For example, if you wanted to include data from Facebook or LinkedIn, you would need to use one of these connectors, since Google doesn't provide inbuilt connectors for these platforms. At the very bottom, you'll find open source connectors, which are also called community connectors. You can search for connectors, and you can also select My Data Sources to use data sources that you have previously connected to other reports. I'm going to select Google Analytics as the connector for this report. We can then select the Google Analytics account, the property, and the reporting view we want to use for our report. For this example, I'm going to make use of the Google Analytics demo account, but of course you should use your own Google Analytics reporting view or other data source when you create your own report. Once we're happy, we just need to click Add. And then Add to Report. We can see that a table is automatically added to our report and we're looking at the report canvas, which is where we build our report. Across the top of the window, we have a range of options. For example, we can select insert or add a chart to add visualizations to our report. Since the table is selected, we can modify this chart using the panel on the right hand side. We can see that the data tab is currently selected. This lets us view the data source for the visualization and change the dimensions and metrics used for the visualization. There are also a range of other options that give you additional control over what is included or excluded from the chart. We're going to create a dashboard that shows us how people are finding our website. It's going to include various elements from the Google Analytics acquisition reports. Let's start by changing the dimension from medium to marketing channels. To do this, we can click on the current dimension and then search for default channel grouping and select our new dimension. We can then see the table updates. Let's add another metric to our report. We can either pull a metric from the column on the right or we can click add metric and then search for the metric we want to add. I'm going to search for goal conversion rate and add this to the chart. We can now see the table shows us the different marketing channels sending people to our website, the number of sessions for each channel, and the goal conversion rate. 
Now let's customise how the metrics are presented. To do this, we need to make sure we have the chart selected, and then we need to select the Style tab. You'll find a range of options for customising your chart. For this example, I want to customise the way the metrics are displayed, so I'm going to scroll down and look for Column 1. Then I'm going to select Number, and change this to Bar. We can see our chart updates to show a visual comparison for the metric. Now let's select Show Number, so that we can see the metric included in the table. We now have the metric along with a simple visualisation. OK, now let's repeat this for the second metric. We need to look for Column 2, and then change Number to Bar, and enable Show Number. That's it. Now we're going to copy this table to present other data in our dashboard. To do this, you can use the keyboard shortcuts on your computer, or you can select Edit, then copy, and then paste. I'm going to modify this table to show all of the referring websites that are sending traffic to our site. To do this, I'm going to change the dimension. So let's select Default Channel Grouping, and change this to Source. Now we can see that this does include some referring sites, but it also includes other traffic. This means we need to apply a filter to the chart to only include referrals. There are a couple of ways we can do this. We can create a filter inside Google Data Studio, or we can apply a segment from Google Analytics. For this example, I'm going to apply a segment to the chart. So let's select Add a Segment. We can then choose System Segments and select Referral Traffic. That's it! We can now see our table is updated to only include referral traffic. Now we're going to copy our table again. We're going to use this table to present the custom campaigns we are tracking into Google Analytics. For example, our email campaigns and other custom inbound marketing. To do this, we're going to change the dimension. Let's select Source and change this to Campaign. Now we can see that the first row is not set. This is for all of the traffic that isn't being classified as a campaign. We'll need to filter this out. Since there isn't a default segment for campaigns, you could head to Google Analytics, create a custom segment, and then apply that custom segment like we did for the referral table. However, this time, I want to show you how you can use a filter to customise what's included in a chart. Let's select Add a Filter. Let's name the filter Exclude Unknown Campaigns. And we'll change Include to Exclude. Now we need to search for Campaign. Then select equal to, and enter opening bracket, not set, closing bracket as the value. Now let's click Save. That's it, we can see our table is updated and the first row that previously said not set has been removed. Let's copy our table again. We're going to use this table to present a list of paid keywords from our Google Ads campaigns. To do this, we need to change the dimension. Let's select Campaign, and change this to Keyword. We can see that the table includes Not Provided, which is for our organic keywords. And we can also see Not Set. We will want to remove these from the table, so let's add a segment. Let's select Add a Segment, and then let's select the Paid Traffic segment. We can see this has cleaned up the table, but we're still seeing some sessions for Not Set. We can reuse the filter we created for our Campaign table, and apply it to our Paid Keyword table. So let's select Add a Filter, and add the filter we previously created.
That's it. We now have a table that only includes the paid keywords that are sending people to our website. Now let's add one more visualization to our report. I want to add a stacked bar chart that shows the overall trend for our top five marketing channels. To do this, let's select Add a Chart and choose the Stacked Column Chart option. We can see that the chart is showing us different traffic sources, but I want to see the trend for the date range, so we'll need to modify the chart. Let's start by changing the dimension from Medium to Date. Now we can see that the dates aren't in order, so let's change the sort from Sessions and change this to Date. And then we need to select Ascending. OK, so now we can see the dates in order, but I want to view more days. So let's select the Style tab and change the number of bars from 10 to 29. Now the chart includes a lot of information, and I only want to see the top 5 marketing channels. So let's change the series from 10 to 5. Finally, we need to change the dimension because the chart is showing us the traffic sources, and I want to see marketing channels. To do this, let's select the Data tab, and change the breakdown dimension from Source to Default Channel Grouping. That's it. We can now see the overall trend for our top 5 marketing channels and a daily breakdown. Before we wrap up, I want to show you two more things as you begin using Google Data Studio. First, you can adjust the names of dimensions and metrics used in your reports. To do this, select a chart. You can then hover over the metric or dimension you want to rename. And click on the Edit icon. I can now rename the dimension. Let's name this one Referrals. And let's also repeat this for my Paid Keyword table. Let's change Keyword to Paid Keywords. OK, finally, let's take a look at the default themes available in Google Data Studio. These allow you to quickly change the style of your report or dashboard. To change the theme, just click on the canvas so that you don't have a chart selected. We can now see the default themes that are available. This is a quick way to adjust the overall style of your reports. That's it. We've created a dashboard to understand how people are finding our website using data from Google Analytics. So that's how you can get started with Google Data Studio. Before we wrap up this video, let's briefly recap on the steps we followed to create our report. We started by heading to Google Data Studio. We connected a data source to use in our report. Now you actually have the option of connecting multiple data sources to use in your reports, and this is something I will cover in my next video. Once we connect our data source, we can then add visualizations to our report, and we can then customize what's included and excluded from our report in Google Data Studio. That's it. Please take a moment to check out the extra resources below this video. How are you using Google Data Studio? Do you have any tips you'd like to add? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, please subscribe, share it with your friends, and hit the like button so I know to make more videos like this. See you next time.